So I call this series with a question, are you ready uh, for the return of Jesus Christ? Because uh, I'll show you some things today that uh, kind of identify where we are. But let's start off in the book of Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. I'm going to look at Hebrews 9, 28 and then Psalms 34, 4 through 5. This is our text for this series of sermons. I don't know how far I'll get today, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang in here. Somebody says, well, why would you be teaching this? So you can get ready. A lot of things you won't do if you're focused on what's about to happen. Okay. A lot of things, you know, I'll show you a scripture where the Bible says that the grace of God will teach you how to live right so that you can be prepared for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, look at this in verse 28. Let's read it out loud if you have your Bibles. Ready? Read. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time. Now, now look at this in the NLT. So those who look for him. And I don't know if there are a lot of even Christians that look for him because... Over the years, this has been, has been accounted as a fable. Over the years, it's, 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 it's something that people don't talk about. Over the years, you have scoffers who say, well, he's not going to come. I claim, I got, we're going we're to deal with all of that. But the Bible talks about all of that stuff that would happen. The things that are going on today were in the Bible thousands of years ago. He says in NLT, so also, also Christ was offered. How many times was Christ offered? Once for all times as a sacrifice to do what? To take away the sins of many people. All right. He says he will come again. He will come again. See, we used this scripture when we were talking about grace and showed you how you were delivered. He will come again. Your sins have already been taken away. He will come again. But not to deal with our sins. Why is he not coming again to deal with our sins? Because he's already dealt with them, right? He will come again. Not to deal with our sins, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly waiting for him. And now he's talking about complete salvation where you get your glorified body. He will come again. So what are we supposed to do with that? Tear it out and act like it's not in the Bible? He will come the second time. He will come again. Now look at this in Psalms 34, verses 4 through 5. I want to look at it in the King James and then the NIV. Psalms 34, 4 through 5. He says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Now look at this in the NIV, 4 and 5, same, same verse. Wow. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, he delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. I'm telling you, I am looking for the return of the Lord. There is something about the Christian that's in expectation of his return. Now, remember he said, I I've delivered you from fear. A lot of Christians don't look for his return because they're in fear. Oh, but what if I'm not ready? Oh, but what if I did this? And oh, what about my past? Jesus, he took away all that. Jesus, Jesus, listen, the only thing you got to do to be saved is, is, is to make Jesus the Lord of your life, accept his forgiveness, accept his sacrifice, and you're there. You're, you're not perfect now, nor will you ever be perfect until he changes you. Stop that tomfoolery. You're always going to have something to work on. But when you saved and you know it, you are looking for the return of the Lord. I am, I don't know where we were, uh, maybe I think it was Wednesday or something. 
and 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 we heard this little slight something that sounded like a trumpet or something. I don't know what. It's the Bible said, wasn't it? I don't, I don't know what that was, but we were ready. I'm like, well, it, the, I'm thinking the trumpet ain't as loud as what I thought it was, but I was looking up because I was ready to go. And for every Christian, that should be a point of excitement, not a point of fear. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. Jesus Christ is going to appear the second time. Now, Jesus is coming again. Now, now here, here we go. I'm going through the scripture. How can you say that? It's in the Bible. Look at the New King James Bible. Uh, in uh, let's look at John 14 verses 2 through 3 John 14 2 through 3 why are you giving so many scriptures because it's not been taught a lot and you need to know where it is you need to know where it is I, I, my objective here is not so I can preach so awesome so you can give me a 10 we need to know this there's something powerful that's going to happen in your life as a result of you knowing that it's in the Bible look at this John 14 Verses 2 through 3, he says, In my Father's house, Jesus is speaking here, are many mansions. If it were not so, he said, I would have told you that it was not so. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. Somebody say, that's me. And if I go and prepare a place for you, watch this, I will come again. I will come again. I will come again and I will receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also now the church spent so much time fussing about the word rapture well you know the Bible the rapture ain't even in the Bible I don't need to see no word rapture right here he says I'm going to prepare a place for you and I'm coming back for you now you call it what you want to here he is I will come again he's coming He's coming sooner than we think. Amen. Glory be to God. It's in the Bible. Jesus is coming again. Now, now here, here, are the, here are the things that hopefully I can deal with effectively today. There are signs of Jesus' second coming. There are signs. Look at Luke 21, verses 29 through 31 in the New King. Uh, James Version, Luke 21, 29 through 31. There are signs of Jesus' second coming. Look at 29, 30, and 31. He says, then he spoke to them a parable. He said, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they are already budding, you see. And you know for yourselves that summer is now near. We know that, right? In the natural. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. So there are some things that are going to happen that Jesus says, just like when you see the trees bud, you know that summer is near. I'm going to give you some signs to look at to know that I am near. Does everybody understand that? So the next obvious question is, what are some signs? What are some signs? Well, it's, it's in the Bible. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. What are some signs that, that the Bible here talks about? Matthew 24, and let's start at verse 3, and then I'll, I'll read on here. He says, and, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, when shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming? Now he coming. He coming. Now the Bible says no man knows the day nor the hour. Not even the son of man. Only God knows. Right, so this is what this means. If I were to get up and prophesy to you that God is coming tomorrow, I'm automatically wrong. Why? Because it says, don't no man know. So, 
You don't need to be listening where they said he was coming before. Where if you'd have read the scriptures, you'd have known that they were lying because don't no man know. Not even the angels in heaven know. So if somebody tell you a date that Jesus is going to come, he is absolutely not going to come on that date. So don't be going buying stuff and all that other kind of stuff. I can promise you, if any human being announces that Jesus is coming on a particular day and a date, I guarantee you, if I was a betting man, I'd bet, I'd bet $10,000 that day. I'd, I'd, get, I'd, get, I'd get rich off of you that day. <laughs> He's not coming. Because no man knows the day or the hour, and we'll run into that scripture as we go. But he said, what's the sign of thy coming, and what's the sign of the end of the age? Uh, not, not the world, but the, the, the age. So we want to take some time to look at this now. Uh, and then look at verse 4 and 5, and here's where we'll take off, verse 4 and 5. He says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, so he's going he's gonna to talk to us about some signs, guys. He's not going to leave us completely in the dark. He's going to talk to us about some things to look at. He says, and, and Jesus said, uh, answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. How I many of you know deception is great, right? Deception is so big. There's some things that I know I can't even tell you. Deception is huge. It's humongous. And he says, be careful that you're not deceived. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. So the first sign is that many will come in, your, in his name. Now, I, I, what I did was I went to uh, several sources, uh, Wikipedia, some other sources, to actually see if I can find some, some data on the signs. Now, I'm sure that the data is probably much larger we're, we're, we're looking for frequency and intensity because he compared his return uh, to a woman who was having birth pangs and if you know a woman who has birth pain the first pain doesn't mean the child's coming not even the second one but it is measured in frequency and intensity so you've heard of earthquakes happening you've heard of of all these things happening but what he says is watch out when it becomes more frequent and more intense look up your redemption draws near okay there have been uh, 75 uh, fakes 12 which or maybe 16 percent are living right now and this is according to Wikipedia there, there, have, there have been 75 people who have claimed that they were Christ and showed up with some, some tricks to try to deceive. And of those 75, 16% are living right now today. So this is not like, well, that hadn't happened. Now, I'm not talking about just obvious people who hadn't been called. I'm talking about I'm talking about people who have who said that they're Christ and they got weird signs and wonders following them. Now, if you haven't read your Bible correctly, do you know the devil can do some weird signs and wonders? All the way back to Egypt, when the magicians put their rods down and they were turned into snakes. Uh, but Moses put his down and and somebody said, well, he, how do we know he's not a musician? Then that snake ate up the other two. I'm like, oh, look who dominated. But that's already taking place. We're sheltered in the United States of America, and you don't see some of the stuff I myself have seen traveling to places, real voodoo. You, you see stuff. You see stuff. Even when, when Samuel died, Saul went to a woman who stood between... The, uh, uh, the living and the dead and Saul broke his own rule and said could you tell Samuel to come back I gotta ask him something and, and she did it and Samuel said why did you disturb me what I told you before I died is still gonna happen he said in fact you and your son gonna be with me tomorrow see you, you don't get all that 
You, you, you listening to, 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 to the propaganda of the news and you don't understand stuff like that really happens around the world. You've never seen somebody really demon possessed. Tapping, I have. I was in, uh, oh, what island we were on, and this woman was possessed with demons. And she came towards me, man of God, man of God, counsel me. Well, I was in the middle of burnout. I was in the worst condition of depression I'd ever had before. And my wife recognized that that was a demon. And she turned around. She said, in the name of Jesus, you foul devil. I cast you away from me now. I don't even, listen, the, the lady, it was a straight street. The lady was running down the street and she had disappeared. I don't even know what happened. You, you ain't never seen nothing like that. You think all that stuff is fable and stuff. But there are fake Christ showing up. Performing little tricks, because you know how we are. We still in a situation where if, if, if a guy got up just to win you over, he would go to your Facebook page, trace somebody he know to find who you are, get three or four people, call your name out and give you an address, and you start shouting because he knew your address. All he did was go to Facebook and get it. <laughs> See, y'all still playing church. This is play stuff over here. But when you get to places like, where's that place we went and, and 17, 20,000 people showed up, half of them were demon possessed? Uh, Budapest. Budapest. I walked down a place to preach. We, we, you talking about, we, we, it wasn't no, where we, oh, you just saying they demon possessed. You could see it, couldn't you? You had never seen that like that before in my life. You can see it. And I'm standing up here. And, and, and at one time, I just got mad at the devil. And I said, Satan, silence. And it got quiet for a minute. And then it started talking again. I said, we, we got to get up out of here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's it time to go. <laughs> Fake Christ. Now look at verse 6 and 7. He says, and you shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. I love this part. He says, see that you be not troubled. You know what he said? You see that you be not troubled. You're going to hear of wars, rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. So you can't cast this out. You can't bind it in the name of Jesus. You can't get all the intercessors together to make this stop. You can cast out devils, but you can't cast out prophecy. Amen. Certain things gonna happen. You just gotta make sure you see to it that you're not troubled because you accept the peace of God. You accept the Holy Ghost. You accept the presence of God. See to it that you're not troubled. But trouble's been prophesied to come and you can't stop it. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nations. The actual Hebrew Greek word there is ethnos, which talks about ethnic groups. Around the word rising against ethnic groups. And kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. Now, now the first and the most important point I want you to, to, get, get, to get and to give your complete attention to is that even with the bad news in these first several prophecies that we see, Jesus tells us not to be troubled. That's what I want you to focus on. I am not going to be troubled. Say it. The only way we will not feel worried or downtrodden or disturbed by the news of war, disease, and earthquakes... And you've heard all of that, but that's not the key. But Jesus said, you make sure you're not troubled. Uh, iniquity will abound. And you'll begin to experience and see things like you've never seen before. But we've got to get the peace of God in our lives. And we've got to understand what the peace of God is all about. And we've got to understand why God wants us to... To, to walk in this peace. We've got to have unshakable faith in him who's faithful. And, and we've got to understand, I think, in um, John chapter 10, write this down, John chapter 10, verse 27 through 29, he talks about his children that were in the palm of his hands. 
We're in the palm of his hands. Say that. I'm in the palms of Jesus' hands. Psalm 61 verses 1 through 5. Psalm 62 verses 6 through 8. He says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. See to it that you be not troubled. He only is my rock. He is my salvation. And if we only believe that, if we receive those things, those promises that God has given to us, you, that's how you see that you be not troubled. You, you go to what the word has to say about you. And you see that you be not troubled. Now, let's look at the, verse 6. Through seven, he said, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, I looked up some stuff in Wikipedia on the ongoing armed conflicts, and if you only count uh, the conflicts, uh, only counting conflicts with at least a hundred deaths. So this is stats with at least 100 deaths in the past two years. They reported that there are 32 wars involving 64 countries right now. You ain't heard about all of them. When I'm in another nation, there's something going on in that nation and they're not even broadcasting the news at home. 32 wars involving 64 countries right now. And a low-end estimate is more than 12 million casualties in the past 50 years. 12 million. Action News is not going to report that to you. Now, let's go on to verse 7. He says, For nations shall rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines, famines, Pestilences, earthquakes in different places. Now, verse 7, there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes. Now, again, from uh, the source, the Wikipedia source, since 1980 to present, there are approximately 3 million people have starved to death. That's just recorded. I believe it's way more than that. 3 million people starved to death. And during the 20th century alone, there's an estimate between 70 to 100 million people that died from famine. In fact, Ethiopia just reported 500 some thousand people right now are suffering in famine. That's what he said. Pestilence. Pestilence. All right, so now, pestilence is, is deadly diseases. That's what he's talking about. Now, since AIDS began in 1920s, a lot of people don't know that. Since AIDS began in 19, 1920s up to the present date, there have been 36 million people Wired to die of AIDS. Deficiency can be induced by chemicals also. Spray Are chemicals. you ready for the return of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Creflo Dollar reveals the eternal oh, what perspective. What the heck am I doing here? Mm-hmm. 